out London. I'm gonna be real with you guys. I was born in Sacramento. <laughs> the only things I know outside of America and my local McDonald's is like, I don't know, they got a, the Big Ben. That's pretty cool. Uh, I think I know more about like Japan, man. They got Kamurocho. I like Kamurocho's a real place. I think I'm just a huge fan of Yakuza. Just to kind of drizzle in the groundwork of what you're working with here. I am not a massive British historian, nor was I born as like a Brexit geezer, all right? I'm not having a little banter. I'm not going to the pub. The pitch is, pitch is not looking lovely today now, all right? I don't got any of that. I have no correlation with London. Saying that, this game was so good it has irreversibly changed my vocabulary. I got in trouble at work for calling one of my co-workers a hooligan, all right? It is a little crazy to me that sadly in the process of making this game, uh, Queen Elizabeth II has passed away. Uh, the game started in 2019, she passed away in 2022. A little, little odd to think about, but you know, maybe Prince Charles would love to grind out some fall of London men. I don't know what kind of build he'd use, he used something crazy though. He looks like a man of meta. We are one minute in, I'm getting political, I can't be doing this man, I'm, I'm cooked. I'm so cooked. My plan was originally to beat this game in a couple days, right when it came out, and make a little video on it, basically explain what happened. That is not how this went. I have almost 30 hours in the game and have not been able to beat it physically as in there is an issue in the game that has stopped me from beating it i have forced softlocked myself but because i'm not going to be talking about story in this game as i feel like people should really play this because it's really good i'm going to sit here proudly take that l that i could not beat a fallout game and talk about it anyway <laughs> Originally, I was going to do this separated into like the good and the bad kind of idea, but I'm gonna change that around because this is the second time I've redone this recording. Everything good has an issue with it, and I think it's a lot more easy to understand if I kind of go through it one by one. So we're gonna do it that way to start. Hope you guys enjoy, like and subscribe. This might be a longer one, we'll see. And yeah, I'm already gonna be two days late on this, so <laughs> we'll see how this goes. The map is big it is grand it is always bringing you into a day of loading screen i got a pretty good computer <laughs> i put up my stats right here in the corner and um see if i keep waiting maybe the loading screen that you're actually watching right now will uh will finish up but uh, i'm probably still off by a couple seconds if you ever see a door that says load into london be prepared to just sit for a while and it is entirely worth the wait. This city looks straight badass, all right? There is not a moment I hated walking around this city. Recreating the grandiose, almost medieval feeling idea of London in Fallout was done phenomenally here. It looks better than most things I've seen from even things made by Bethesda. I spent as much time just randomly walking around, not even following my compass, walking into some grandiose area and going, there's probably something good in there. And when I say grand, I mean grand. They will let you sit and soak in these areas because some are so large and can have surprisingly a small amount of enemies in some areas and just a big building. <laughs> there's a lot of times where you really get to stop and take it all in around you. You know what I mean? It's a lot of walking around, exploring these places in the city and finding just this cool shit everywhere. And there's so much creativity and very, very small amounts of repeats when it comes to some of the buildings. So overall, this shit looks pretty good. 10 out of 10, I think it looks phenomenal. People seem way too okay with some of these situations. Example is my boy here, I'ma call him Vegetable Venice, all right? Vegetable Venice here runs a vegetable shop. Name's pretty obvious. He runs a vegetable shop next to a Toys R Us. Pretty normal. The Toys R Us is a gun range. <laughs> Who kill people. Why is he fucking working here? It's not like he's defended by anything. Oh no, he's out roaming the street with his little shack next by. Like, I mean, what are you doing, man? And he, he no care in the world. Man does not care. Man does, the, I don't even think he knows the bombs have dropped yet. And like, I get I get the joke of like, oh, a good day, chap, this is Britain on a good day kind of idea. But this is whiplash, man. And there's this isn't the only example of it that I've seen. There are a couple of characters who just act as if nothing is going wrong. And I get, I get the idea that I'm gonna guess this takes place near the same time as Fallout 4, so that kind of like 200 range, so it's way later in the time period. But th there are people who are just like in horrible situations, who are just like, yes, yeah, 
Fucking normal, normal day in London, ain't it, bruv? Gotta finish clearing up the local corpse so I can catch the local Tommy in its stream. Along with the world they built, they have a new radio station called The Mend. The other two are just kind of your classical and normal music from like Fall 4, and they're probably some more classical music and whatnot maybe mixed in. I didn't spend a whole lot of time listening to it because The Mend is just so fucking good. It's a mix of about 23 different songs from a bunch of different composers, some even made, I think, for the game, which is very neat to see. And sadly, I probably couldn't play any of it. But I am late on this video. Give me, give me a second. <laughs> you guys better cut me some damn slack on that, alright? That's the first time I've done that since 6th grade, alright? What Back when I used to do plays. Little young thespian me smiling up from hell. The variety on set for this one radio station is really well done. And I actually am a real big fan of the narrator. Narrator? Radio, radio host. Radio host is the word I'm looking for. For the radio station. These these also are really good. I'll put a link to all the music below uh, for a Spotify link if you guys want to listen to it. I, for one, was a huge fan of all the music that Pepper Coyote did. I have liked a lot of his stuff for a while. Um, there's horses in the game. Yeah, there's, there's a horse. There's a horse in the game. Don't ask why I brought it up. If you know, you know. A good way to start when talking about the enemies and the creatures and difficulty of this game is that this game will not hold your fucking hand. I played through the whole thing on normal and got my ass fucking handed to me over the first half of the game. Easy. This is not the kind of experience like Fallout 4 where they're sending you to clear house on something and it's just going to be a quick stroll down the street. If they send you to go clear something out, it is a menace to deal with. Especially with the idea that you don't get a decent companion until at least farther into the game. They're kind of locked behind this little story moment that I won't really describe. But before that, you got a dog and a child, and the child can't fight. This game takes the idea that you do not know what's going to be behind that door. Fucking seriously, you do not know what you're going to run into. What the fuck is she doing there? <laughs> I didn't even kill her, I just ran away. I, there was no fighting that thing. I did like two damage per shot. I didn't even have bullets. Speaking of bullets, if you try to do a gun build in this game, you have to remember that this is London. They don't have a whole lot of bullets lying around, especially for the early game. You're gonna be struggling on ammunition. Speaking on ammunition, the guns that enemies could be packing could be quite varied. You can have people with more service rifles, more military types, some robots with infantry rifles, or you can have a pirate with a musket or a, or a small like flintlock gun. These things will fucking eradicate you in three seconds. They don't fuck around when a black prior rifle comes out, okay? These things are deadly. They are as deadly as they were in real life. These things will shoot holes into you. If you miss a shot, you are immediately dead. But if you hit that shot, they're not coming after you for a long time if they're alive. This also comes down to most of the guns you're gonna find early on are basic kind of pistols or just kind of weaker weapons in general. So a lot of them don't do a whole lot to robotic enemies. So running away from a lot of protectrons pretty early is very normal. I didn't kill a single robot until about halfway into my playthrough because it was just such an ammunition waste that it wasn't worth doing. To be fair, part of that was my fault. They definitely try and push you towards a more melee build when you start. The first weapon you get is the Balasog, and I mean, uh, you did not need to go that fucking hard, man. Doing more of a tanky melee build I do think is a very, very viable option in this game. I ended up with a companion to cover that for me. Some of the melee weapons that you can just randomly find are brutally overpowered. I found myself just as much backing up to a machete that I had, even though I was a gunslinger. It ended up being just as viable as my build in general. And I think because just doing pistols was not the right idea. <laughs> One issue with the difficulty though, um, faction war. Without spoiling anything, there is a group called the Syndicate. If you do one of the main story-ish missions you get when you start the game and you kind of follow down that path, which I won't talk about a whole lot, you reach a point, it doesn't tell you this, but you reach a point where you come into contact with the Syndicate. And if you complete that mission and end up with the next mission, not if you do it, if you end up with the next mission, the Syndicate's hostile to you. And that's, you know, it's usually, it's like, okay, whatever. They own like one or two, but they own this much of the map. These guys are fucking everywhere. And they don't come in small forces either. They'll patrol the streets with big gangs everywhere. And basically everything up this area is all them. Not even like raiders or what, it is all them. And when it comes to group fights, they're packing in both quantity and quality. They will fuck you up quick. I'm not opposed to tough love or anything, but you you could have given me a warning, man. I didn't know that there was going to be this much of a this early. I do love the idea that you can make them friendly with you again later on in the storyline if you play your cards correctly, obviously. It's, you know, faction wars and whatnot. Until you reach 
that point, which is about the end of that storyline, you're screwed. And it, it hurts just as much because a lot of the main story will send you into these areas for little spots and whatnot. And when you have to fight a full fucking armada to like speak to a man there, it's, it's a little tedious, I will say. Overall, I would still highly recommend this whole game. I think it was a lot of fun. One final note though, getting this game to run correctly is a bastard to do, all right? This, this is pain. If you are not very mod savvy and haven't worked with Bethesda games a whole lot, there, there are some issues that you cannot figure out very well unless you really start looking into it. Because it, it is not as simple as a one-click download kind of idea. People will struggle with this, especially if you're not used to modding Fallout games. It's not as much as the developer's issues, it's more of Todd fucking sucks and decide to update the game so you have to deload and de-update the game and whatnot. And Steam kind of a big no-no on that kind of idea. <laughs> Thanks GOG for making it a little easier, but Steam is a big no-no on it. Last word, we're all Fallout fans here, all right? We understand Bethesda jank and Bethesda glitches, all right? This is this is Bethesda jank with modder jank. It can be a little fucking jank. <laughs> for me specifically, it was so jank that it actually broke one of the final missions in a quest line I needed to do to complete the main campaign. But basically, let's say group A needs to be at point B over here, and they don't really know how to move, and I can't continue the quest line until they move. It kind of happens every once in a while. <laughs> be prepared to like punch a couple enemies or push people around yourself, or even in a super rough cases, have to use the console to move and respawn enemies and players in different areas because the game will break on you every once in a while. Most of it is pretty solid. I don't think I had any major issues with the game, albeit a couple little glitches with some NPCs and some uh, AI mapping is a little busted at some points. But other than that, it's pretty good. I think my biggest issue overall other than that was just companion mapping. You really got to keep these guys on a leash because they will get stuck on basically anything, especially if it's like the kid or the dog in the early games because they will run all around and get themselves stuck on whatever you want. But if you're willing to put up with that and you love a bit of Fallout modding and you understand what you're doing, this is a great, enjoyable experience. People should play it. Thank you guys for watching this. I know it was kind of a bit all over the place and I think I went back on one thing. I ended up not talking about companions because, you know, I'll avoid spoilers if I can. Hope you guys enjoyed. I know this is a little odd. Next I'll do my kind of normal content again after this.